Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And today I want to talk about diffusion. This isn't something I've talked about a lot on the channel yet, but I get questions about it all the time. And so in this video, I just want to cover a few do's and don'ts that you really need to consider when you're thinking about using diffusion in your home studio. So first up, don't just buy one or two diffuser panels and expect that it'll make any sort of significant difference in your room. This is one of those things where you need a number of panels to even hear the difference for them to have any effect on the actual sound in your room. So you want to look at buying at least four at a time in order to cover a significant portion of the bare walls in your room and actually get any effect from the diffusion. Otherwise, it's just a drop in the ocean. Sure, like that particular area where you put the panel will actually diffuse sound, but in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't make any sort of difference for how well you can work in the room, how the room feels, and what your kind of results you can expect from your mixes. Now, of course, these panels are expensive as well. So you can already tell that diffusion is maybe not the best starting point, especially when you're working on a budget. It's just not the first thing you should really focus on because you just need a fair amount of these panels. You need to cover a fair amount of surface area with diffusion to actually get an effect. Okay, second, don't expect diffusion to somehow artificially extend the reverb time in your room. This is something that I see people kind of talking about all the time when they're facing a room which is already over damped or just very dry and very with very short reverb times to start off with. They think that they can put up diffusion on their walls and somehow end up with a longer reverb time than they started out with. But that's not how diffusion works. In effect, it actually acts kind of like absorption. It actually shortens the reverb time in the frequency band where the diffusion works. So you can't just put up a diffusion panel on a flat wall and then somehow think that that will actually extend the reverb time and make your room more lively. Instead, if you want to actually liven up your room, you need to cover up absorption with either with the panel or otherwise. You need to somehow get rid of the already existing absorption in the room. And so when we're talking about treating small rooms, maybe you can already tell that that's not necessarily a good solution because you're actually getting rid of useful absorption to control the low end, for example. And that brings me to my final point, and that is that you don't want to think about or use diffusion when your room still has low end issues. Right, this should be obvious, but I still see people kind of drifting towards the shiny, shiny star of uh, diffusion, even when their room isn't fully treated in the low end yet. And as I just explained, diffusion really is band limited. It works in a very restricted part of the spectrum, usually something between about a thousand hertz and four to eight kilohertz, right? So it works in the mids. But if your room still has low end issues, you wanna take care of those first that will actually move the needle and improve your ability to hear from your speakers and trust what they're actually giving you. Of course, in theory, you could make diffusers work in the low end, but it actually makes them prohibitively large. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a picture of Blackbird Studio C. Basically, it's treated only with diffusion. And if you want to have an idea of what it takes to diffuse low frequencies, have a look at the ceiling in those pictures. You'll basically see a standard quadratic residue diffuser, so those kind of pyramid-shaped things, but it's huge. It's absolutely massive. And that's because obviously low frequencies have very, very long wavelengths. And so in order to have any significant effect on these low wavelengths, we need massive, massive kind of objects and structures that will actually affect these long wavelengths. So obviously that doesn't work in our small home studios. And so the diffusers that we do use, that we can use, are typically focused on that mid-frequency range. 
So instead, the obvious answer is you want to use porous absorption. So base traps made with an insulation material core. If you use them right, you can totally get a controlled and perfectly usable low end in your studio without actually using massive amounts of space. So again, if you're thinking about diffusion, looking at diffusion options to treat your home studio, make sure you remember those three points. Don't just buy one diffuser panel and expect it to make a difference. You need at least four, in my opinion, to see any significant effect. Also, don't expect diffusion to somehow extend the reverb time in your room to make it more lively. If your room is already overdamped, if it feels dead, what you need to do is get rid of high frequency absorption, right? You need to either cover up those panels, get rid of them entirely, but don't expect to add diffusion on top of what you've already got and expect the reverb time to somehow get longer. That's not how it works. And third, don't use diffusion if you've still got low end issues in your room. Diffusion doesn't actually affect the low end, or at least the diffuser panels that you can somehow actually fit in your room won't work in the low end, right? For that, you need porous absorbers. You need base traps made with an insulation material core. And to help you figure out what you actually need in terms of base traps, I want you to download my free guide to base traps and base trapping. It's basically like a really short list of all the different types of base traps that you might find out there. And it tells you how they work, how to make sure that you put them in the right spot in your room, how to know how many you need, and basically everything you need to know in order to make the right decision in terms of what types of base traps you need in your room, right? So make sure to download the free guide to base traps and base trapping, which I've linked in the description. Okay, I hope that cleared up a few things. If you're currently looking at diffusion for your home studio, make sure you always keep those three points in mind. I'll see you in the next video.